good morning. Well, good morning for me. Good evening for you. I yeah. am I am here with Andrew Spudfit Taylor today and have the privilege of interviewing him. So good good evening and thank you for taking the time today to do this. Thank you for having me. And um yeah, Spudfit's not actually an official part of my name, but uh people are people are just used to referring to me that way now. So that's fine by me. It's okay. Absolutely. Well, okay, I know you ate nothing <laughs> but potatoes for a year, so share your story. It's a great one. Uh, yeah, well, it, it, was, uh, it was a, a funny year and a strange year, and, uh, and it was the best year of my life, and, uh, and I'm trying to keep that coolness going but at the moment. But, um, yeah, I, I ate nothing but potatoes for all of 2016, 366 days in a row of eating potatoes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and everything in between. And, uh, yeah, it got it, – uh, somehow people got interested in it. When I started doing it, I thought it was about the most boring thing a person could possibly do. And, um, yeah, people got interested, in it, and it went viral, and, um, uh, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> well, before you began this, what health issues did you face? Uh, I, there wasn't any major health issues. I was obese. I was, you know, I've lost a lot of weight. And uh, well, yeah, what was so the was, highest? Yeah. What was your highest? Uh, when I started, I was one hundred and fifty-one point seven kilos, which I think is about three thirty-five pounds. Okay. So yeah, that's a health issue in itself. But yeah, yeah, for sure. I, and, and and it usually leads to other health issues, and I wasn't yet. I didn't have any, I didn't have diabetes or, you know, I was, I didn't, I was probably pre-diabetic or something, I guess, but, you know, I didn't have any issues that I needed medication for or anything. I did have um, clinical depression and anxiety and, um, and I did have some joint pain issues from an old football, Australian football career, um, things like that, but nothing major. I was definitely on the road to health troubles if I kept on going the way I was going, but I wasn't at the point where, you know, things had gone south dramatically. I was just, I was, I was very overweight. Yeah, I was only 35 years old at the start of it. So maybe another 10 years down the track, things would have been looking, looking nasty for me. Well, was there an aha moment where you just like, uh, okay, I, I have to do something. I really, I've got to change. Was, was there that moment? Yeah, yeah, there was. And it came a little bit before I, I started doing it. I was out, I was, like I said, I was, I was suffering with clinical depression and anxiety. And yeah, I was out walking one day with my, with my boy. Uh, it was a perfect day. The sun was shining. The sky was blue. The sun was bouncing off the ripples on the lake and the grass was green and everything was perfect. You know, my, my depression was pretty bad at that stage. Uh, every day at some point during the day, I would just break down and cry for no apparent reason. Oh. And I would usually find a, a small, you know, an air, usually I'd go to the toilet, so I'd be on my own and nobody knew. I didn't, nobody in my life knew that this was happening, but I'd, it would happen every day. Anyway, this day I was out walking with my boy and, and it happened while we were walking. And I, uh, I found myself sitting on the edge of the path with my little two-year-old boy and he was wiping away my tears and telling me not to be sad. And, oh. um, yeah, and, oh. and, you know, there was members, uh, you know, complete strangers walking past who saw that and they knew more about me in that instant than my wife even did. So oh. that was a, not a nice moment. And uh, anyway, so this is a long answer, but I'm, I'm getting to the point. Uh, <laughs> But we went and you know, I picked myself up, dusted myself up, and we went to the playground and had a good play, had a good time. And on the walk home, I was thinking about, I've been a teacher for 15 years at that point in time, and I got thinking about how every time I've ever done a parent-teacher interview, when the parents come in, the kids instantly make, make sense because when they're struggling to understand a kid, you meet the parents and you go, oh, that's why you're like you are. Because the, apple. Actually, the apple doesn't you know, fall exactly. far from the tree. Exactly. And I had that realization. Then I started thinking about my, my boy and yeah. thinking, oh, no, he's going to end up exactly like me. Oh. And at the time, that was the worst thing I could think of for him. I, the last thing I wanted in the world was for my little boy to end up like his dad. Oh. So at that point in time, I, 
I knew I had to do something. So, yeah, so I, I thought, well, I, I'd, I'd had depression for a while and I didn't know what to do with that. I was at the point where I thought I was stuck with depression forever and there was nothing I could do about it because nothing was helping me get better. So I thought, well, my boy's going to grow up and be depressed. Hopefully I can make it so that he doesn't grow up fat as well, you know. <laughs> Uh, maybe I can okay. maybe I can just try and lose some weight and that way my boy can grow up and be instead of growing up and being fat and depressed, he can grow up and just be depressed. <laughs> I was like, that's all I could think of, you know. Well we so, try. I mean I'm I'm a teacher yeah. too, so I totally get yeah. the apple theory. Get it? Yeah, well, oh yeah. my god. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, you meet the parent and well, go, woo. It's true. It it's is very true. rare to to find a kid that's not at all like their parents. It doesn't happen. That uh, moment made me think, right, I have to do something about my weight. I can't do anything about my depression, but I'll do something about my weight. So I started this health kick. I did green smoothies in the morning for breakfast, salads for lunch, healthy dinners. Got up at 5 a.m. every day to do some exercise, and I went really hard at it, and I did really good for a month. I didn't weigh myself, but I knew I was losing weight because my clothes were fit, fitting better. And it, everything was going really well. And then a month passed, and I went, right, I've done a month. It's going really well. Tonight, I'm going to reward myself with oh. one slice of pizza. I'm just going to have one slice of pizza and watch a movie and it's going to be great. Of course, you can't buy, you can't get home delivered one slice of pizza. You've got to buy the whole yeah. pizza. So, yeah, long story short, the one slice of pizza turned into the whole pizza plus ice cream, plus soft drink, plus, you know, eating everything I could get my hands on. And then the next day, I didn't get up and train and I didn't have my green smoothie and I didn't have my salad for lunch. And then... In the afternoon, I was sitting around feeling very sorry for myself, feeling really depressed and really down on myself and really angry and just all the emotions were just negative. And then I went to the fridge and got myself a beer. This is not a beer, this is a water bottle. But I sat down, cracked open the beer, and in that instant, I realized that I had been treating food the way an alcoholic would treat the beer that was in my hand. Yeah, that was a lightning bulb moment. Uh, so there's a couple of lightning bulb moments that we're talking about, but that was another one that, hang on a second, food, you know, we know, all know of alcoholics that have quit alcohol and gone for a week or a month or a year even or a few years without a drink and then suddenly one day they go, ah, oh, it's my best friend's birthday, I'm just going to have one drink and then they wake oh, up. It. Sure enough, yeah, one, ten, one drink turns into 10 and then they wake up in a pool of vomit and they go back to being an alcoholic and, yeah, so... Uh, the next logical progression from that was to think, well, if, if an alcoholic is best served by quitting alcohol, surely a food addict would be best served by quitting food. I know, so that was the idea. That's tough yeah, to I wanted do to because you, ha- yeah. you have to eat. I mean, it, yeah. it's for an alcoholic, and, and I totally get this because I feel like I, sh- I should be like, hi, I'm Gene Schumacher. I'm a food addict. You know, I, I, yeah, I feel like yeah. I should be like standing up and, and just like I'm at an AA meeting or something. I get it that it's totally hard because and for for an alcoholic you can say okay I'm not going to to drink anymore or for a smoker I'm not going to smoke anymore and to divorce yourself from those those behaviors or that, those activities but you can't divorce yourself from food. Yeah. Yeah, well in that initial moment when I had that realization and I thought well if an alcoholic has to quit alcohol then a food addict should quit food you'd think that would give me some comfort. But in that moment, I thought, well, you can't quit food. So it just made me get even more depressed. Like, okay, I can't even, I've got this addiction and I can't even quit it. I'm stuck with it forever. Like, Aww. what can I do? That's it. Yeah. So, but then I got thinking about it. So I was just sitting there drinking my beer and thinking about this problem. And I thought, you know, I thought, well, I can't quit food, but maybe I can just like quit some foods. Maybe I can just quit this and that and, you know, maybe I can quit chocolate cake and quit pizza. And then I thought, hang on, maybe I wonder how close I could get to actually quitting entirely. Uh So maybe I could try to find one single food that could keep me healthy and then quit everything else. And that would be getting as close as possible to quitting food entirely. So, yeah. And so I decided I did a hell of a lot of research, a lot of time spent, you know, hours every day for probably six weeks of researching uh, all sorts of aspects of health and which foods are, are possible to do it with. And yeah, I set it on potatoes. 
Well, that was my next question is why the yeah. potato, but clearly you, you answered that one already. So, okay. I, yeah, I posted... well, there's just a lot of evidence. Basically. There's a lot. I can talk a little bit more about yeah, that please. if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of evidence that potatoes were going to be the best choice. There's historical evidence from the obvious one is the Irish diet before the potato famine. The, the Irish ate almost only potatoes for a couple of centuries and they went through a population boom. And that doesn't happen if you're, if you're struggling for nutrition, you know. You don't, right. you don't make babies after babies, you know. <laughs> it just, that's not the way it works. One of them, there, there's uh, examples of Scottish prisoners of war that were locked up and fed only potatoes and they did really, really well. Obviously, they didn't enjoy being locked up, but yeah. from a health point of view, they were, <laughs> you know, they were fit and strong and they didn't really get bored of the potatoes apparently. So there's that. There's lots of examples around the world of people that have eaten only potatoes. That there's, uh, there was a scientific study of a couple, I think they were Polish, uh, in the 1920s that were, they ate only potatoes for a period of six months. And I believe they were a marathon running couple. And actually at the end of six months, they were happy with the diet. They felt good, they felt strong, and they weren't bored of potatoes. And they actually ran personal best marathons after the six months. Wow. Yeah, so there's that, as well as a whole lot of research about the actual nutritional content. There's a lot more that I could go into, but there's a, you know, a basic overview of why I chose potatoes. Yeah. So, okay, one of my viewers, because I have a Facebook group and you know, we do these challenges and things, one of them wanted to know, What's your favorite variety of potato? I don't have a favorite. They're all good. <laughs> Sorry to be boring, but uh, it really, it's not. It wasn't really about trying to find the the best potato or the best way to eat them or anything like that. It was, uh, yeah, it was really about just just trying to quit food. So. You know, it didn't make sense to me that if you're going to quit food, then you should then try to find the best way to do everything, the best kind of potato, the best way to cook it, the, the best, what's the most delicious, yummiest, all of that sort of stuff. I was trying to quit food and quit right. all that. So it was about keeping it boring and just forget about food for a while. So, so yeah. you just kept it simple. Really, really simple. I didn't, I didn't keep it as simple as possible. If I just went plain boiled potatoes, and that's it. That would have made it as simple as you could get. But I did do that quite a lot. But really, I kept it to boiled, baked or mashed potatoes for nearly every meal. And I used a little bit of very, very little bit of dried herbs and spices or maybe some ketchup or tomato sauce or barbecue sauce, chili sauce, those sorts of things. But you know, talking about a big plate full of potatoes and maybe one tablespoon of sauce. So really minimal. Um, use of sauce and minimal herbs and spices. Every now and then, maybe once or twice a month, I made something a little bit more interesting. But yeah, it was well, really it was about trying to make it as bland and boring as possible. And okay. Really so food, before yeah. you started the potatoes, let me back up for a second. When yeah. you were on, when you started this month long journey to to be better, to be healthier, you were drinking the green smoothies. You were doing. You were exercising. Did you feel better? Did you have any more depression or is it your depression abating? Were you seeing progress that way? For that month? Yeah. Uh, my, yeah, my depression, I guess it probably lifted a little bit, but I wasn't really paying attention to that so much at that time. I don't think it did a lot for my depression. Yeah, but did it did. It. Obviously it did help a bit. I was feeling better about, um, about, you know, the way I was, I was moving, I was starting to, you know, the, after training for two hours every morning for a month, I was starting to get through my training sessions better by the end of the month and my clothes were fitting better and things like that. So those sorts of things, yeah, they have an effect on depression. Um, so yeah, I guess it probably did, it did help, but it didn't, it wasn't, I guess I wasn't doing it long enough to have a big change and maybe the foods I was eating weren't as good as potatoes are for depression. So Maybe that, that was something to do with it too, I'd say. But yeah, I did. I certainly made progress. I got fitter and I got I lost weight and I was eating only healthy foods for that amount of time. So, yeah, I didn't have like before and after blood tests or anything to really quantify to, it all at that, that point yeah. in time. But okay. Yeah, it was probably towards the end of October was when that month finished, October of 2015. Right. So, yeah. And then once you open that floodgate, you know, the dopamine and hitting that, you know, rewarding your, your pleasure centers, you know, as, as Doug Lyle likes I, to call them. I, I call it a foodgasm. 
Okay, that's a good one. I like that. That's a good yeah. one. It, it's really tough to, I, I call it like opening the floodgates from hell. And it's mm. really, really tough to close those gates again. I mean, once you yeah, open yeah. them, it's it's really tough. And even just I noticed like in myself, we do these 10-day challenges. We go 10 days off, 10 days on, 4 days off. And then those four days, those four days you can get into trouble, you know. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not, I don't think, you know, if, that, if your 10-day challenges work for you and everyone watching, that's fantastic. I actually envy that, but I don't think I could do that. It, it's, I, I'm not someone who can switch it on and switch it off, I think. Well, I don't mean like switching right. on and off like, like um, yeah. whole food plant-based versus eating pizza, yeah. ice cream and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, no, we're we're going from doing McDougal's maximum weight loss for ten days, and then just switching yeah. to like, okay, maybe you uh, might have some pasta for a day or two. Um, yeah, you might yeah, have yeah. a little bit of like a cashew cream sauce on your potatoes yeah. or something like uh, okay. that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're not we're not going sense. crazy, you know. But yeah, that's that's probably something I could do then. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have the cashew sauce or some things like that because I try to keep it really low fat. But um, yes. but yeah, I get what you mean, and that's um. Yeah, that's something I could do for sure. But I agree with you what you said about just opening the floodgates. And even after that, <clears throat> that day where I realized I was a food addict and decided on doing some research to see if quitting food was a viable option, even during that whole research, I just kept eating the way that I typically would. Even though I was reading all this stuff about good health and watching all these documentaries and everything and and learning a hell of a lot about nutrition and you know, I feel like I've got a degree now. I did so much. I know, reading. right? Yeah, I read not just books and documentaries. I, you know, I've got a history, I've got a science degree myself, not in nutrition science, but I've, I do have a science degree. So that you know, sort of gives me a little bit of a leg up on knowing how to read the science, read the studies and interpret data and interpret study design and all that sort of thing. So I read a lot of published literature as well mm -hmm. and um yeah i really learned a hell of a lot over that amount of time and i was still eating crap until i started oh. you know so yeah so once i actually <laughs> started the challenge then then i got better but yeah it was yeah you're right it's it's really hard to put the genie back in the bottle <laughs> yes very much well i mean you can't because put it toothpaste is... back in the tube they say <laughs> <laughs> well okay that would be a <laughs> Is that an Australian one down uh, under? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where I got that one, but yeah, I haven't heard that for years. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> okay, because it is. I mean, when you compare the two, the you know, a drug addiction and food addiction, it's it's true. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it, there is no question about it. It's so tough. I don't know about where you live, but where I live, I'm in a very, I'm in Westchester in New, you know, New York County, <coughs> and it's tough to not be able to drive down the road without seeing mcdonald's yeah. wendy's burger king taco bell you know you're just you're just inundated with all these foods that are just the wrong foods yeah. you know to eat and yeah, yeah. A day after day of things that are banging your pleasure center and and how, how do you go away from giving that up and you know like like you said i've been good I'm just gonna have a little bit, you know, yeah. just a little, little, little bit there, and then before yeah, you know it's it. it's funny, you know, like, yeah, would would you? People say, oh, you know, but moderation, moderation, blah blah blah, you know, everything, everything is good, a little bit and whatever. But I, I respond by saying, you know, would you, would you tell an alcoholic that it's okay to have a beer once a week, or would you tell a heroin addict that just shoot up just once a fortnight, or you know, or just one line of cocaine every now and then is okay yeah. for a, for a, and I think, you know, there are people, I'm sure there are people that exist that can do one line of cocaine once every month and no. be fine with it. No. But, but I don't think that's a good idea, but I'm sure, you know, there are people that can have two beers on a Friday night and be done with it. But not me. There that's, are people, yeah. Yeah. And there are, there are people that can eat one slice of pizza once a week and that's okay. But uh, that's not me. It just, it's not how I operate. So, you know, if you if you're gonna tell me that uh, it's okay to have chocolate cake once a week, then it's the same as telling an alcoholic that it's okay to go and have one beer on a Friday night. It's not gonna happen. No. Well, one slice of chocolate cake is gonna be the whole cake, and then the next day again and again and again and again, and just like an alcoholic's, just if they have one beer, they're 
there's a good chance they're going to become a full blown alcoholic again. Yeah. Uh, no. And McDougal, Dr. That. McDougal, I love him to death. And he talks about yeah. – about uh, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. So you know, he's like when he when he smoked, he's like I know two packs a day or nothing. I don't yeah. know in between. You know, I have an Irish friend that last a uh, couple of years ago, I was I was working with him, and it was a Friday night, and uh, and I, hey, come and uh, come and have a beer with me. And he said, Nah, I'm not going to come tonight. We we often drank some beers together after work on a Friday night. He said, no, I'm not going to come tonight. Oh, why not? What's, what's going on? He said, oh, busy day tomorrow. I can't come out tonight. I said, oh, well, just, just come and have one or two beers with me and then go home. And, uh, and then you'll be fine for tomorrow. And he said, no, I can't do that. Uh, I was like, well, why not? He said, because, uh, because one beer is too many and ten's not enough. Right. And uh, <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I can relate to that. One slice of pizza is too many. And the whole pizza is not enough. <laughs> yeah. I, I, there's a woman at work that I work with, and she can take and keep chocolate in her desk and just break off a little piece and eat a piece of chocolate. Uh, uh, yeah. I couldn't do that. I'm like, how can you um, do that? How can you do that? My wife's, got a, my wife's got a block of chocolate in the fridge now that's been there for like three months. <laughs> like, what? How does that work? <laughs> if I had one slice, it, it would be gone pretty soon, but... Yeah, I'm fine with it being in the fridge. It doesn't bother me. Uh, uh, I can leave it there. It's no problem. But I know if I just have one little bit of it, then oh, that's, that's it. The end. That's it. Yeah. That's so. it. No, no, no. But yeah, she can. She's. It's been there for three months, and I reckon it's probably still a quarter of the block there. <laughs> I, I I don't know how that. I don't know how people can do that because if it's if it's in my yeah. house, it's calling my name. It's yeah, you know, and it's, I can it's hear not it. Be in the house for long. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So how did you handle the cravings, you know, as you were doing the potato, uh, you know, your year of potato? Well, it was the first two weeks were really hard. And after that, it was not so much trouble. So in the beginning, honestly, before I started this, I really thought that I wouldn't be able to do it. I, I thought that I, there's no way. I thought it was almost impossible to do potatoes for a year. And I thought I probably wouldn't be able to do it. Um, but I, in the end, I decided that you know, if the, only, the only real failure in life is in not trying. So I thought I'd just give it a try and see what happens and see if I can figure it out. And I didn't have any strategies before I started. I didn't know what I was doing. I just figured I'd just do it. Just do it and I'll figure it out along the way. Maybe I'll figure it out, maybe I won't, but I'll give it a try. So the, the first day or se- – no, the first day wasn't too bad, but the second day it got really bad and, uh, and I decided I would not – put too much pressure on myself and I would uh, stop worrying about whether I was going to make it through the whole year or not or the rest of my life or anything. And I just decided let's just focus on one meal at a time and, and let's just eat potatoes for breakfast and deal with lunch when lunch comes. And I came up with this strategy that everywhere I went, I would always have potatoes with me. I'd pack a big plastic box of potatoes and I had it with me everywhere. And my number one strategy was if I felt like a piece of chocolate cake, then I would say, no problem, you can have the chocolate cake. That's not an issue. You can eat it and there's no argument here. But before you have the chocolate cake, you have to eat this box of potatoes. I have to eat the whole thing, stuff myself with them, eat until I can't eat anymore, and then see if I want the chocolate cake. So I did that multiple times and it was always the same. By the time I'd finished a big box of potatoes, stuffed myself really full with potatoes, and then think, hmm, do I want chocolate cake? No, I never do. Cravings are always gone by the time I did that. But the trick is to actually make yourself eat the potatoes. Right. And then it's going to work out. But uh, to actually do that is a thing. And it's not about I'm eating potatoes instead of chocolate cake. I was eating potatoes before the chocolate cake. But then the chocolate cake never came. Does that make sense? It does. Well, that's what I was going to ask is did the chocolate cake ever come? You know, did you ever no, no, did you ever break I, in that that year? And, and I never, I never even licked a spoon that was uh, had something bad on it. Wow, uh, was, wow. Yeah, and I still haven't. Uh, you know, I st- I eat things other than potatoes now, but I eat McDougal style. I call it whole food spud based. So, yeah, whole food plant based, but with a lot of potatoes still. And I uh, still, I still haven't eaten anything that. I would consider to be off plan, you know, I just, right. 
Right. Um, I'm good with it now. But that was my number one thing. First eat potatoes and then see what you feel like. That was number one. Well, and, uh, and my second thing was, have you seen the movie The Matrix? Yes, yes. Most people have. It's a pretty good movie. Yeah. So um, there's a scene near the beginning of the movie where uh, Neo gets in the car with Trinity and, uh, and he gets in and immediately they turn a, a guy in the front seat turns around and pulls a gun on him, right? And then another guy gets out this machine and they want to get a bug out of him. And, and it's all, everything just happened a bit fast for him and he's, he starts freaking out and goes, stop the car. And he opens the door and they stare down this long, dark uh-huh. street raining and depressing and it's it's like dimly lit down the sides and it just stretches off into the distance and it's just mm-hmm. it's just dark and depressing looking and trinity grabs neo's hand and says trust me neo and neo says why and she says because you've been down that road you know where it leads and i know that's not where you want to be mm-hmm. and that i repeated that line to myself over and over again when i had these cravings i would just tell myself You've been down that road, you know where it leads, and that's not where you want to be. That's, I've got a very, very rich data bank of information throughout my history that says if I take one bite of cake, the whole cake's going to be gone soon. It happens every time. I know that happens. I can't trick myself and tell myself that it's going to be one bite or one slice or whatever because I only have to look through my history to know that I'm lying to myself when I say that. Yeah. So I know. If I have one square of chocolate, I've been down that road, I know where it leads and I know that's not where I want to be. So uh, when I really take the time to think about what's going to happen, if what are the consequences of this choice, it's, it makes it much easier. It's not just, it's not just uh, I have to, I'm not going to have cake, I'm going to have potato instead and that's all I think about. It. I try to take 30 seconds or a minute to think deeply about my choice and think about what I really want out of life and do I want to travel down that worn out road that I've been down so many times before or do I want to get back in the car and you know, go and meet Morpheus and take the, take the was it the blue or red pill, I don't know, and <laughs> life opens up, you know, right. and just find out what it is to live. Right, you know? exactly. That's what it's all about, yeah. Well, once you started the journey... How long was it before you realized the depression had lifted, the anxiety? Was there a transition? Did you just have an aha moment and go, oh, my God, I'm not depressed anymore? Uh, Sort of a combination. It was, like I said, that first two weeks was really, really hard for me. And I I help other people do this Spud Fit Challenge now through groups and through coaching and stuff and I have a lot of people that say oh it's surprising how easy this is but and I'm like I can't relate to that at all it was really hard for me and and my depression was bad in the first two weeks I think because I because I wasn't able to use food to regulate my emotions and I hadn't figured out other ways to do that so I was just down but then I, I think after two weeks Maybe one day I was just sitting in a, I can't remember the exact moment, but I remember there was a time came when I thought, oh, uh, yesterday was a good day and today I feel good too. And I don't have two good days in a row. That doesn't happen. So, yeah, this is, that's interesting, but I didn't think anything more of that. And I remember thinking maybe after about a month, I was like, I've had three or four good days in a row now. And then after two months, it was like, it's been a couple of weeks since I've had a bad day. And yeah, it was, um, yeah, so it was sort of, it was a gradual progression, but I, I think probably after two months, I didn't really, it wasn't an issue for me anymore. Depression was not really a problem after that period was done. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, what yeah. other changes did you see in your body? Oh, uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of changes. Uh, we can go, yeah, all sorts of things. My Initially, I started sleeping pretty, like I hadn't slept well in a long time. My sleep really improved quite quickly. And within the first week, I was having really much better sleep. But within a couple of weeks, I noticed that my joint pain from old football injuries, I used to play Australian football, which I don't know if you guys see it over there, but it's a pretty brutal sport. No, wait, is uh, that like soccer or are we talking like rugby? No, it's a, it's a sport of its own called Australian Rules Football. Okay. And to say it's, it's full contact is to put it mildly. 
Um, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, look it up on YouTube or something if you're watching Australian Rules Football. Look up a YouTube video of big hits or something. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I had, I had joint pain from old injuries from playing Australian football. Okay. And, and I didn't really notice. I thought that was just something I had to deal with for life because there was injuries. The injuries don't go away. They're just, you know, after 10 years, you're just stuck with it. But two weeks, no more pain, all gone. Wow. And um, yeah, obviously we talked about the depression as well. And obviously I think most people know that you know, people haven't heard of me, but we talked already anyway, I lost a lot of weight as well. So yeah, my, my blood, I had a lot of blood tests done. That they improved over the course of the year. Uh, yeah, I, I, everything did you, was good. Did, I your, did you tell your doctor you were doing this? Yeah, absolutely. And I recommend everybody does as well. Yeah. I was very confident in my research that everything was going to be okay, but it was worth, it's worthwhile still. Just well, did he think you were crazy? No, he he's a whole food plant-based guy. Anyway, oh, okay. I went to him for that reason. So I figured that a, any typical doctor would think I was crazy. So I tracked down this guy who was into whole food plant-based nutrition and was a McDougal kind of guy so he he didn't understand what I was doing and he didn't understand my ideas about addiction and whatever but he he said oh well if that's what you want to do you'll be okay I don't know why you want to do it but yeah <laughs> but yeah okay. I'm, I'm happy to he was he was like yeah well you know do what you got to do and I'll do the blood test and everything is going to be fine and yeah okay. <laughs> Well, at least you yeah, had a so, doctor that support supported you even in 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 your journey, because it's tough. Yeah. Because most yeah, doctors well, aren't trained; they don't understand about food yeah. and addiction and the problems with it. Yeah, I advise. I have lots of people that I talk to, and I advise that if you're going to a doctor that might not be supportive, then just tell him that you're eating the way he wants you to eat, and then go and do what you want to do. And, but, you know, keep consulting with him so that he or she, I shouldn't say him, doctors can be he's and she's, of course, but keep consulting with them, you know, get your tests done and keep things up to date and keep them in the loop with how, you, with how your health is and make sure that, you know, you're getting your medication checked and doing all the right things, but eat right. whole food plant-based or eat only potatoes and then, you know, next time you go back when your health's improved, then you can say, oh, and I'm like, actually, I was doing this and they can go, I don't believe you. Get out. And uh, <laughs> everything's... <yeah. laughs> well, especially you know? for somebody who's like either like diabetic, who's on medications, those kind of things, or yeah. high blood pressure, those things can change. <clears throat> I teach a class at a local community college, and I had uh, this one woman who had severe rheumatoid arthritis. Ten years she'd been on pain medication, and she just said, you know, the medication doesn't help with the pain. It just dulls it so that yeah. you're, you don't care as much about the pain. And... She, that the classes were on Saturday, so we went from Saturday to Saturday. And she went home that night, cleaned out the kitchen, cleaned out the house, filled it with good food, and then started. You know, she found a couple recipes, and and by Thursday of that next week, she had stopped the pain. She didn't even realize she wasn't in pain anymore until she went to go reach for her pain medication, and and she was like. <gasps> I, I'm wow. not in pain. I'm not in pain. You know, so it's one of yeah. those those moments where you're like, oh my God. You know, yeah, so I mean, yeah. that's that's clear cut to see. But when you're doing things like diabetes or your high blood pressure, you're not going to know, you know, as well as you're monitoring yourself. Day -to -day. Yeah, it's really important, especially. I've had plenty of stories like the one you described too about arthritis with the with potatoes as well. And yeah, diabetes. I've had a lot of people have got off medication for diabetes entirely very quickly from eating only potatoes too. My, my favorite was six months ago, a guy who had had type two diabetes, let's, let's be specific, it's gotta be type two, type one's a different story, but type two diabetes for mm -hmm. over 30 years and had tried, he thought he'd tried everything to get off medication and fix his diabetes. He was totally off medication totally normal blood sugar levels within two weeks of eating only potatoes. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I've had stories like that just over and over and over again. It's pretty amazing what, well, what this can do. In your journey, did you find anybody who was or had issues with potatoes? Because I know, like, aren't they from, the, like, the nightshade family? Yeah. And yeah, that's some the people, only issue I've had. Some, I'm I have, yeah, 
So yeah, the allergies is the only issue I've found. People that have been actually able to follow it properly and do it 100%, I've not had a single person say they had any any uh, issues with it, not at all. And the people that do have nightshade allergies, I get them to do sweet potato instead. Oh, okay. The normal spud fit challenge, I say you can have white potatoes or sweet potatoes, but if you've got nightshade allergies, you go just sweet potatoes because they're not a nightshade. And what, what we find is that after a couple of weeks, you can just start adding back in uh, white potatoes and the nightshade allergy is gone if you just go sweet potatoes only for a couple of weeks. and then Really? Yeah, you can gradually add in white potatoes back in and you, you, the allergy is usually gone, yeah. Okay. You wouldn't, just, you wouldn't just add in like a whole day full of only white potatoes, but if you just gradually add them back in, you're good to go most of the time, most people, yeah. So did you ever know, I mean, in your research, did you compare the sweet potato to the potato? Is it equally, I mean, in, in terms of nutrition, are they both okay yeah. along the same way? Yeah, they're pretty comparable. Yeah, there are certain things that are different. Like vitamin A is pretty good in sweet potato and not as good in white potato. And, you know, there are some things that white potato is slightly better in some things and sweet potato is slightly better in other things. But really, they're, they're very comparable from a nutritional point of view. Um, people tend to go for the sweet potatoes because they've got a lower GI and it's not, uh, that's not really something I buy into. The, if you're eating, if you're not, if you're taking the fats out of your diet, then the GI mm -hmm. really is an issue as far as I can tell. So either one or a combination of the two is, a, is just fine there. Yeah. There's no, no need to choose one over the other. They're both really, really good nutritionally. Mm -hmm. I think white potatoes are better because they're cheaper. That's the main thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Well, since the completing of eating, you know, only potatoes per year, first of all, I have to ask, what was your meal? What was your first meal afterwards? Uh, well, it's interesting. By the end of the year, you would think it would be the opposite, but I really was not interested in eating anything else. It didn't really... It didn't really bother me. I wasn't, there was nothing I was particularly going, oh, I can't wait to try this or that or whatever. It was just, I wanted to eat other food because I wanted to be a bit more of a normal member of the public, you know, rather than just <laughs> a fat guy. But I didn't really care what food it was going to be. But I had a fully catered breakfast party on the 1st of January. And I just got the caterers to, I just said, yeah, just make me whatever you like, as long as it's whole food plant-based. You know, they were a whole food plant-based caterer, so that was easy. I just said, just make me whatever you like. And, oh, my um, God, how nice that you have that option. That doesn't oh, exist it's a, here. Oh, it's, a, it's a big city and we've got one. So <laughs> Melbourne, okay. Melbourne's, quite, Melbourne's a big city and we've got one option. So yeah, I am lucky that I've got that, but I don't want to make it seem like the, oh, there's a plethora of uh, businesses out there doing this. It's just okay. there's this one. But, um, but yeah, she... And it's one girl that runs it. It's not a huge business. It's just one girl. So, um, but anyway, she made me some breakfast burritos. What was it? See, this is how little I cared. I can't really remember it that well. <laughs> uh, breakfast burritos. And then I had a casserole, a breakfast casserole as well that had, had some tofu and uh, all sorts of things in it. <laughs> Chickpeas, I think, and yeah. sweet potato. And I had some fruit as well. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. How did you feel yeah. afterwards? I, I felt fine. It was it was not an issue. I didn't it didn't spark any cravings or any desire to overeat. I, I had a I just ate until I felt comfortably full, and that was that. I didn't overeat, and I yeah, it was it was just it was just fine. It was not an issue at all. And the only thing that was amazing was that like the taste was just incredible. It was like the most amazing, delicious food I've ever eaten in my entire life by a long way. Uh, you know, when you've had a year of eating very, very bland food, it's, it was really incredible. And, you know, tasting it, like the highlight was not the, the prepared food. The fruit was just out of this world. Tasting a piece of mango or a, a grape. I remember having a grape and like, have these always tasted like this? <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it, and it was like an hour later, an hour later, I could still really strongly taste the pineapple in my mouth. Like, oh, it was, it was, yeah, pretty, pretty special in that way. <laughs> okay. 
Well, did you put weight back on when you transitioned back into it, or have you? Are you continuing to lose? Do you still have weight to lose, or where are you on your journey? Uh, so I for the for January I lost another two kilos, which is about four and a half pounds. So that was about that was a month of eating whole food plant based, and since then I have stopped weighing myself. I don't weigh myself anymore. Um, and I've really, I didn't want to weigh myself last year either, but I did because so many people were asking and wanted to know. But really, my theory, and I, I think it's a good one, is that I got myself into the mess I was in because of my behavior. Mm -hmm. I was choosing the wrong foods and eating too much and doing all these, this bad behavior with food. It was my actions that got me into that mess. So, focusing on a number on the scales is not going to get me out of that. It's my actions that got me into it and it's my actions that are going to get me out. So my focus is on my behavior, not on what the scales say. If I, if I eat the right foods consistently day in, day out, the scale is not going to go up. It can't. You know, it's going to go where it needs to go. So, so for that reason, I decided to stop weighing myself. Um, the... I, I want to focus on doing the right things, eating the right foods day after day, week after week. And whatever the number on the scale is in, that'll take care of itself. That's not something I've got control over anyway. I've only got control over what I put in my mouth. And that's where it ends. So I focus on what I put in my mouth and forget about what the scale says. So, yeah, it's a long answer to your question. But, <laughs> but the it's first, a good one. The, the first month I lost a little bit of weight and since then I haven't weighed myself. I don't know what I weigh. But uh, my clothes, I bought, had to obviously, I had to buy a lot of new clothes to fit uh, the shape that I was in at the end of the year. And the clothes still fit about the same. So I think I'm I still weigh about the same. But uh, I think I've probably got a little bit more weight to lose. Uh, but whatever, that's going to happen when it happens. And yeah. Okay, um, well, uh, here's the big question yeah. Do you still eat potatoes? Or you're like, uh, no, I don't want to look at another potato again. <laughs> No, I like potatoes. I eat a lot of potatoes. Like I said earlier, I call my diet whole food spud based instead of whole food plant based. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I, I eat a lot of potatoes. I eat every day I eat potatoes. Most meals have potatoes as part of them in one way or another. I'll tell you my favorite meal if you like. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a simple guy, but my favorite meal is I get a half, big handful of frozen broccoli in a bowl, two minutes in the microwave. Then I get two potatoes out of the fridge because I've always got potatoes in the fridge. Two potatoes out of the fridge, put them on top, chop them up and put them on top of the broccoli. Then a can of baked beans, tip that over the top. Another two minutes in the microwave, done. That's okay. my favorite number one meal. I eat that nearly every day, sometimes twice a day. Ever since yeah. the air fryer for me came out or since yeah. I purchased one, oh, french fries. <laughs> French fries. Mm. Ooh, love my taters. I also make, we have a store here called Trader Joe's, and they have. I've been there. Chef AJ took me to Trader Joe's. Oh. Yeah. It, awesome, uh, do you right? Know Chef AJ? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Who doesn't yeah. know Chef AJ? Please. Uh, okay. uh, Please. Sorry, I just I got to. Yeah, well, anyway, when I, I, I came, I was uh, very generously flown to LA for a Veg Source Healthy Lifestyle Expo last year. And I was lucky enough to meet and hang out with Chef AJ and I went to her place for dinner one night. And yeah, she took me to a Trader Joe's and it was like heaven. Was, she lives next cool door night. to a Trader Joe's. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I get the, they have these hash browns that the potatoes are already shredded. And most here in the United States have oil and Can't salt at it. Yeah. yeah. But Trader Joe's, it's just nothing. That's just the potato. Yeah. That's it. That's great, so, yeah. I've looked everywhere for that sort of thing here and yeah. you just can't get them. Yeah. Oh, well, that is one thing I'm so happy about Trader Joe's. So, yeah. I mean, it's a ways away for me. It, it, it's, you know, I have to make it a point to go, you know, because yeah. it's, it's a, I don't live next door. So it's, yeah. you know, and you don't want to get behind me when I go to Trader Joe's because I'll be like buying the case, you know, like yeah, yeah. in my <laughs> cart, you know. Yeah. So, because I'll take it home and I'll bring it. We have freezers and and uh, stuff. So, but I'll take the the potato waffle, and I'll I'll what you know get it unfrozen, and I'll get out as much yeah. moisture as I can. And I literally put the potatoes into a towel, roll it up, 
and, yeah. and squeeze out as much moisture. Then I add whatever seasonings, garlic, I love garlic, onion powder, or bear bear seasoning, which is... Never heard of that. Oh my gosh. It's like an, a Middle Eastern spice. It's amazing. And, and it just, and the, the flavor of the potatoes just like, it, it just makes it go pow. I'll put that into a, or a waffle iron and I'll make potato waffles. Nice. And when they come out, I have learned the trick. When they come out of it, and I'll show you my, I'll send you my, uh, my potato waffle video. I take them out and then I put them into the toaster oven, and I put them on two toast cycles, and they come out. They are so crisp and crunchy, like literally, you can pick them up and go ah, and bite into them, and they stay yeah. together as one patty. So it's that's yeah, that would have to be my yeah, favorite. That, that sounds pretty good. I've made that. I've made not like that, but I've got a waffle iron too. Mine's much more simple. I just boil the potatoes. When you can stick a sharp knife through, they're done. Put them on the waffle iron and just squash the waffle iron down so they're flat. Cook them for 15 or 20 minutes and then you've got a, you got a potato waffle. Yeah, it's awesome. Rice. It is awesome. Yeah. Well, I actually <laughs> take my, my tea kettle and I fill it up with tea or with water and I set it on top of it so that it squishes it down even more. Oh, yeah. i got so, one that's got a clip. So once you get it closed, you squash it and then oh. you clip it up. No, yeah. mine doesn't have the clip. <laughs> so I put the tea kettle on top, a full tea kettle. Oh, good one. Yeah. So, um, so what's your biggest takeaway from, from this whole experience? Um, I have a saying these days, make your food boring and your life interesting. You know, we focus so much on, on food and yeah. every meal's got to be a gourmet experience. It's all over, everywhere you look on the TV, there's cooking shows. I don't know how it is in America, but yeah. here it's, there's cooking shows everywhere, all day, every day, and there's ads for food. And it's, it's all about, you know, if you have a, if you have a bad day, you've got you to gotta cheer yourself up with food. And if you have a good day, then you've got to celebrate with food. And, you know, every, every single meal has to be a foodgasm. And you've got to, you know, get all these pleasure centers going in your brain and all of these sorts of things. And the thing is that we need excitement in our lives. We need enjoyment in our lives. And we need these pleasure centers in our brains to be firing every day. And we need dopamine hits and all of that. It's got to happen, but it doesn't have to come from food. So my big thing is, yeah, you can enjoy your food, but don't, you don't need to make it the focus of your life. You... You can make your food boring and you can focus on creating this life that's interesting. Stop trying to spend your time enjoying food so much and start trying to enjoy this great big experience we call life. Exactly. And uh, really, that's what it's all about. Oh, and, I love that. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's what it's all about for me. Yeah, so make your food boring and your life interesting. So what advice can you give to someone who's just – starting this journey i mean that's that's you know and we've got so many people i mean i don't know if you've seen that map of the united states where they show the the obesity where they have to keep coming up with new colors because they were shading yeah. in the states who had you know a certain amount of, of obesity and now it's even higher and higher and higher there's so yeah. many people everywhere i go out i see just massively obese people yeah. what advice can you give for someone who's just starting out on this journey uh, there's a lot of things I could say, but there's two two main things that I say to people that are just starting. And the first one is that when people are just thinking about starting, whether it's a Spud Fit Challenge with me or Google's Whole Food Plant Based thing or one of your 10 day challenges, whatever, people I often hear people saying, "Oh, but what if I fail? What if I can't do it? What if it doesn't work for me? What if? What if? What if? Blah blah blah." Um, and I and I was the same. I was no different. I, like I said, I thought I probably wouldn't be able to do this year, I, the year that I did. I thought it, I was probably too much for me. But the big change happened in my thinking when I was, I was, before I'd started, I was thinking, what if I fail? What if I can't do it? What then, you know, what's left for me if this doesn't work? It's the last thing I could possibly try. What's going to happen? And then, and then I had this moment where I just, uh, I just flipped the switch and started thinking, well, I know what happens. If I fail, I know exactly what happens because I'm living it right now. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just continue living the way that I'm living. Uh, that's, there's no mystery there. If I fail, then that's what happens. But the big question that's really worth asking that I don't know the answer to is what if I succeed? 
No. So then I started thinking, well, what if I succeed? Uh, I really don't know. What's life going to look like if I get on top of my food addiction and really, uh, really, you know, get to the point where I don't need to eat food to regulate my emotions and maybe I'll lose some weight and maybe, like, what's life going to be like? I have no idea, but it's exciting, you know, <laughs> thinking about what life might be like if I, if I conquer all my demons. Right. Wow, isn't that worth putting some thought into? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Forget about what happens if I fail. I know the answer, but what if I succeed? Now, there's a there's a question worth pondering. It and is. That, that was a big moment for me when that when I made that change. So that's my first bit of advice. The second bit of advice is that I often get people um, you know, dealing with FOMO, fear of missing out. You know what what's going to happen. If I, you know, I, I don't know if I can give up cheese or I don't really want to give up cake or donuts or whatever. And, you know, maybe what if my friends decide to go to a restaurant where I can't get anything to eat? You know, what, and I, you, know, you know, I've got to go there and make a weird choice or whatever. Or what if, you know, all these other problems that people are worried about you know, making sacrifices. People talk about, I don't want to sacrifice. It's too big a sacrifice to do that diet or this diet. It's, I don't want to sacrifice these things. And my answer to that is that, uh, that there's no such thing as a choice between sacrifice or don't sacrifice. It doesn't work that way. Your choice is always between sacrificing this or sacrifice that. You're going to sacrifice the chocolate cake or you're going to sacrifice your long-term health and happiness. You're going to sacrifice one night out with friends for the year or you're going to sacrifice your long-term health and happiness. You're going to sacrifice a pizza or you're going to sacrifice your long-term health and happiness. That is the way it works. There's no sacrifice that every single sacrifice has. And like Thomas, uh, what is it? Like, um, what was his name? The laws of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite yes. reaction. Every Newton. sacrifice, Newton. Yeah, I was going to say Edison. I know it's not Edison. No, nope, no, nope. so, Newton. So every sacrifice, just like the laws of motion, every action has a reaction. Every sacrifice has an equal and opposite sacrifice. That's the way it works. So I have another saying that is, if you don't sacrifice for what you want, then what you want becomes the sacrifice. So it's up to you. Just you got to choose. Do you want to sacrifice this or sacrifice that? And you know which one of those sacrifices is more important to you? Well, I like I like Yoda. Yoda's the 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 original theologian. Do <laughs> or not do. There is no yeah, try. There is no try. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, "I tried to do the potato diet, but I couldn't." Trying doesn't matter. Trying's not going to get anything done. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with me today, I, or tonight, <laughs> your time. Yeah. I've just started the day out here. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it and, and uh, wish you well on your spud journey. No worries. Thank you, and, uh, and good luck to all your challenges that are uh, around and watching and ready to do something crazy for 10 days. Go and get it done, folks. <laughs> all right. Thank you. <laughs>